Hello, welcome to Sim UK. Today we're going to take a look at Sudden Strike 4, or Sudden Fall Strike, which is what it looks like it says. You can see here on Steam, uh, initially, 2,500 mostly positive views, 71%, and of late, in the last 30 days, it's 46%, which is mixed. I actually think this game is fantastic, but only because I played it for two hours last night and I realised it is fantastic. There's a lot of people, I think, who really haven't given this game enough time or don't appreciate all the good aspects that this game has. It's unique in a number of key areas. And uh, personally, um, within two hours, I was so impressed with this game that I went and bought all the DLC. Now, I've, I've, there's a long story, an even longer story than the one I've already told you, about how this came to pass. But um, I contacted Calypso Media for a key for uh, Tropico 6, and they point blank said, don't ever contact us again, scumbag, tiny useless person, we don't want to talk to you. So I was like, okay, fine, be like that, if that's how you feel. And then Sudden Strike 4 DLC came out, and I thought, well, you know, it's a game that I've seen on Steam multiple times, and I've always avoided it, because it's like 40, 40 quid. 40 quid for the base game. Let's go down here. £40, currently uh, on sale for 9 99 which is far more reasonable. But £40, 40 quid for this game, right? And if you look at the, the, the images and stuff, I mean, that isn't screaming high-quality, high-def graphics to me. Do you know what I mean? It looks dated. It really... I mean, that is an awful-looking thing. In the two hours that I was playing last night, there are a number of things that came up. One, I didn't like how close in you were i felt like the camera should be able to a zoom in further and b zoom out further actually kite games really have listened to user feedback on a on a grand scale there's so much to tell you i'm going to get all confused here on a grand scale and they've made some significant changes to the game uh, which you can apply within settings. This game is is very good in a number of key areas, and I'll show you all of this in a bit. But the zoom in and zoom out, the zoom out feature at least, is an option in settings that allows you to zoom out further. Now, personally, I could do with a little bit more zoom out, if I'm being totally honest. I don't think it's going to crush my PC, because their argument for not having a further zoom out is that it's going to cause your PC to suffer. But I don't think it's uh, that demanding a game that that's an issue. But anyway, you can zoom out a little bit further than the game lets you by default, but you have to go into the option setting and, and turn it on. I've never seen never seen that before, right? But anyway, the these kind of blue icons, these are like um, objective markers. I, can't, I don't think I can find that picture again. So they're, they're... Oh, there's one. Okay, so these are objective markers, and it makes the game look very arcadey, really, which is strange because Sudden Strike 4 is actually very hardcore. This game is difficult even on easy. Uh, on easy, basically, the enemy have less hit points against you and you have a little bit more against them. But even on easy, uh, I have had my ass kicked. So this game is not easy. This game is hardcore. But... Um, They've got, they wanted to appease everybody. Now, we know how well that usually goes. Companies like um, Dirt Rally 4, uh, they wanted to appease everybody. And uh, that game did not go down well. Because there's only one way to appease everybody. And that's to give everybody the options to set up the thing that they want themselves. So that's exactly what they've done. They, they added in the ability to turn off markers. Uh, you can see here that there are shots coming in with these like tracers on them. You can turn that off if you want, make it look re more realistic. You can turn all the HUD off. Everything on the HUD can be turned off. So it's a very pure sort of hardcore RTS uh, simulation. But there's, there's, there's a lot more to this game than that as well. So I contacted Calypso. They told me to bugger off. I contacted them again about Sudden Strike 4 DLC, The Pacific War. This is the new one. It's £15 normally uh, at the moment it's £12.74 which isn't pff, much of a discount um, if I'm being honest and a lot of people are really not happy with the pricing around the base game which is £40 and this DLC which is 
15 pounds uh, they just don't feel that that's good value for money and i can see their argument i really can incidentally i asked for, i didn't have sudden strike four and before i asked for this dlc so at the same time i asked them to send me a copy of the game so that i could review the dlc uh, and they, <laughs> they refused so they sent me the dlc for free and they were like pay the 10 pounds or the 40 pounds for the main game which I, you know i wasn't particularly willing to do looking at the pictures here i wasn't that impressed and obviously on steam there's some mixed reviews and people are not being particularly uh, positive about it despite having been so positive to start with so anyway i found this game for three pound fifty that's the base game three pound fifty okay just ten percent of the price that they actually asked for full price on steam so you can find this game much much cheaper elsewhere i think 10 pounds is probably fair for the base game but uh, i've only got two hours of gameplay in it so i don't know if it's actually genuinely worth more than that but i think 10 pounds is fair for a game that was released in 2017 uh and the dlc sort of at the moment is three pound 50 each uh they've all been um quite positively reviewed by everybody except for the dunkirk one for whatever reason but i haven't played that yet so i don't know yeah so anyway i just wanted to cover all that and um thank god for editing because i can chop this up and make it far less uh, dribble dribbles dribble dribbly drib dribble and uh yeah uh so played it for two hours initially i thought very little of the game and it didn't take me long to go oh ooh. Ah, hmm, that's interesting. I like that. And so it progressed. So actually, now I'm really quite uh, keen on playing this a bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a small series up on my channel, and uh, just see how we go. But let's actually jump in, so I can show you some of this cool stuff that exists with this game. Wow, that was ten minutes, fifteen minutes, nearly of me dribbling on about absolutely nothing pretty much right now look at this this is the introduction to the game kite and the developers they've developed the whole thing from start to finish that doesn't look good does it that doesn't strike look at that background there that doesn't strike me as a 40 pound game um and i think it's good but i don't think it's a 40 pound game this i don't like this little snippet here i do like that it's in keeping with the game's genre the the period and whatnot i think that's quite cool but uh, there's no date on it and f having read it uh they're talking about the recently released road to dunkirk dlc which illustrates blah 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 that's the first dlc they released and that came out i think uh, i don't know a year ago a long time ago anyway um so i mean the fact that that's still there kind of insinuates that they, they don't update it very often and they're asking you to leave a positive review on steam i just think the whole thing's a little bit lacking in class if i'm being totally honest um but there you go anyway there's a modding uh capability for this game i've looked on steam there doesn't appear to be a lot of mods maybe there are somewhere else i don't know also here there's a thing for news if you click on that you can see that the new dlc we are pleased to announce that the pacific war dlc is now available for purchase main features are two new campaigns with 10 new single player missions and this is the reason why most people complain about the price of these things 15 pounds for 10 missions seems a bit steep doesn't it i can kind of understand why their pricing is as high as it is and i think this game is i think this game is so good and it could be so much better but i don't believe calypso really appreciate or understand how good this game could be I, I don't know i could be wrong on that point uh six new doctrine commanders i'll explain that in a bit 51 new vehicle units and new gameplay features now that that is quite a key thing because what's so impressive about this game for me is its historical accuracy and you'll see uh in this dlc obviously we're playing the pacific it's the japanese the japanese were quite well known for sort of suicide uh you know just run straight at the enemy just keep running doesn't matter how many of you die just just keep going kind of thing 
and um, I wasn't expecting to see that perfectly copied into this game. Now, obviously, you know, war, terrible thing, but you have to respect the developers for their uh, attention to detail and accuracy in this DLC. And I think it transpires throughout the entire game. There seems to be a really high level of historical accuracy uh, and detail on everything they do, and it's that's what's really impressing me with this game. The controls and the UI, it's a bit pantsy. Uh, it's not great, but, you know... Um, it's not the worst I've seen either. It could be much, much better. It really could be much, much better. The game has some unique features that I think could make this one of the best RTS, uh, World War II RTS games I've ever seen. But it would it would take a bit of a new fresh lick of paint, a new design, a new focus, perhaps. I'd be quite happy to take over the reins and drive it in the direction I think the game should go. But uh, having said that, they did listen to user feedback and they did make a, a number of uh, important changes. One thing I'd like to mention here, by the way, this is this is the one of the first changes I'd make because it's super quick and easy. Put a date on here, right? There's all this news going all the way back to gameplay improvements, increased effectiveness of sniper supply and repair units, added a new scatter command for inter infantry groups. You can find the complete patch notes on Steam. Great. When was that posted? Well, I don't know exactly, but I can tell you that that is a very early post. So it's been over a year, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, I think they need to put dates on these things so you can see what's relevant and what isn't. Again, <clears throat> you know, it's just uh, quality of life issues here. We're in version 1.1530043, so it hasn't been updated much since uh, that 1.15 update here, so I'm assuming that one's relatively new. <clears throat> I don't know, there could be three 30,000 uh, updates since then, so I don't know exactly. But, uh, oh God, wow, I have dribbled on. Let's get into some gameplay footage. Obviously, you have the Japanese and the US campaign. I'm going to go with the US campaign. And this is it. This is how it works. Uh, you can see I've already completed the first one. I did that last night. I haven't played this one, uh, so I don't know what to expect over there. But these are historical battles. And not only are they historical battles, like important battles in World War II, they've actually made the game reflect what happened in those battles some of them are more well known than others um, obviously the battle of Guadalcanal is quite well known uh, the battle of Maitinkinya I don't know how to say that I'm sorry uh, not so famous battle of Iwo Jima I think there's a movie made on that battle of Saipan anyway um, we're going to start here and there's a lot of stuff to talk about there's a lot to tell you about here this is something they added okay now i find it interesting that there's a normal and an easy mode the easy mode is not that easy it is easy basically i, I mentioned earlier you have higher hit point they they have lower slightly lower hit points um and i'm going to play on easy just because it gives me an opportunity to talk about the game uh, a little bit whilst we're playing ordinarily i'd just go for normal but there's no hard which is interesting uh, there's an easy there's a normal but there's no hard what there is is a challenge so up here you can see the stars uh, and i'm not sure if i got three stars or whether these have not been filled in can't tell i would expect them to be gold if i'd got them but maybe they're silver who knows i think that's my score 24204 or something but anyway so the challenge episode is uh, an opportunity to earn an additional star by taking on... Uh, this can't be done on easy. This has to be done on normal. So the additional uh, difficulty is you will have to earn three stars to unlock challenge mode for a mission. So obviously I, I have got three stars. Loading and saving your game are not available in challenge mode. Completing a mission in challenge mode awards an additional star so you could get four stars. And the difference here is complete the mission against more bayonets. So basically, and I mentioned this earlier as well, the Japanese would just fix bayonets and run at the American soldiers. And they were getting torn down left, right and centre. But they would just keep going because that's the way the Japanese army ran their 
stuff. That's that's the way they did it. Um, and it must have been horrendous for both sides uh, to witness hundreds, thousands of men running straight into machine gun fire and just being torn apart, only to be followed in by more men who are just torn apart. I mean, I, I can't even begin to imagine what it's like, but they have captured that experience really quite well, I think. And it, I wasn't expecting to see it, and it did take me by surprise. And I got a small snippet of the shock factor that that kind of behavior would most likely have inflicted upon the American soldiers at that time. Anyway, let's crack on. So, uh, in every mission, there will be three of these guys. Um, they're all different, but um, there'll always be uh, infantry, uh, armored units, and re uh, sort of resupport, support, support. So let's go. Oh, actually, I've got one here. Let's um, let's take that on. What's this one here? All tanks, self-propelled anti-tank vehicles, towed anti-tank vehicles, recon vehicles, and anti-tank infantry deploy with three armor-piercing anti-tank rounds. Oh, all tanks. Well, we'll take that. What's this one? Hand grenades. Submachine gunners, riflemen, and paratroopers deploy with two hand grenades. Everything is kind of uh, the controlled by you. With your landing forces. Capture the airfield. Prepare the airfield's defenses to repel any counterattacks. So that's basically it, guys. Um, we're going to land, we're going to attack, and we're going to defend this area. But that's the, only the first three parts of the mission. Now, if you remember uh, what I said earlier, the uh, the Japanese were not expecting to be attacked, so they kind of fell back. And what you expect to see and what you actually see when you attack this area is, again, testament to the attention to detail that they've uh, placed in this game. Because you might be expecting defences and military, and there are some, but uh, unless you've actually seen this video already, or this game already, you won't be expecting what you do see, I wouldn't have thought. Moving, sir! Commander, the Japanese are constructing an airfield on Guadalcanal. If they complete it, Australia will be in their reach, and they will be able to air raid our supply lines. We cannot let this happen. After preliminary naval requirements, we will proceed with the landings. Expect heavy resistance on the beaches. See how everything's destructive or destructible? So I mentioned earlier that uh, they had applied these abilities to turn everything on and off, and that's done here. There's a load of stuff, so you can basically turn everything off. You've got complete control over it. If we go, <coughs> if we go into control, you can see camera zoom mode, and we're on extended, and basic brings you in this close. So that's as far out as I can zoom. Unless I go to settings, control, and set this to extended. I think more could be done. It's definitely zoomed out more, but I think it could be zoomed out even more than that, personally. Right, now, to move the screen around, it's the arrow keys, not the WASD. I think you can go in and change these keys again. Uh, I meant to show you the menu system, uh, but again... I mean, this is the default here, SMRGA. I assume that you can rebind all this stuff. I haven't actually tried to do it yet, but the advanced option is this. Uh, and you can see there's quite a lot of stuff. Some of them have like got so much information. I mean, that one button does all of that. It's a lot to take in. Um, and I think it could be displayed slightly better than that as well. You need a bit more space there. But uh, that comes back to the UI stuff. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll just suffer with it <clears throat> for now. So this is our objective, and uh, I'm going to grab these guys and we're going to land. Now, I've already played this once, so I know what to expect. But uh, we'll have a couple of minutes to um, tell you one or two little things I think are quite cool about the game 
before we progress. Affirmative. So we've got two tanks here, and if I yes, click sir. on the tank, you can say unload all. Infantry reporting for duty. And these guys here are actually Waiting the crew orders. members. You can see, uh, if I Reporting click on this guy, you can see he's a crew member, you can see his health info, you can see his uh, ammo. All of the ammo can be resupplied. We also have, if we look around here, see this guy with a little white yes, hat on? Sir? He's a medic. So we've got medics, and you'll see that every single reporting unit is unique. Infantry reporting for duty. It's Machine not, gun moving. Ready, it's, not a, it's not a rifleman unit that you produce. There's no base, there's no HQ, so you don't produce uh, units like that. You've got the units, you've got... You get, uh, re <clears throat> you get resupplied if the mission so allows it, um, but primarily you are basically on your own dealing with it yourself. So let's say I want Boarding to have... To where's the commander? Orders. Oh, there we go. There's an Boarding officer. I want an officer. Ready I want a battle. rifleman. I want uh, an automatic rifleman. I want a mortar Ready, unit. I want a medic. Where did that medic go? Is he a medic? Infantry reporting for duty. Oh, you are. Awaiting orders. Come on. So I have. Oh, there's one there. Look, he's closer. Yes, sir. You just stand there, dude. Just stand Ready, there, dude. sir. So there you go. Waiting so now orders. I can turn that into a unit, and you see up here, that would be my unit. So unit orders. two is all of these men, but I've created yes, a new little unit over here of just these guys, and I could even put orders. one of these guys yes, in here sir. if I so Infantry chose. For duty. But that would be totally pointless because Infantry really ready. he needs to be in this tank. So if I get Orders. all these guys and put them back in all this tank, but not, ready. but not this guy, ready to and then just click on the tank, you can see here that this is highlighted, which indicates that we don't have a full supply of men. Infantry reporting for duty. So the tank yes. is not at We're maximum ready, uh, capacity. This means that the gun turret is damaged, this is the tracks, and this is the armament. So, there's a lot of information, which is good, because you need all this kind of stuff. Anyway.